Installing Fedora Linux in 2021 was way easier than I was expecting. Let's do it. Hello and welcome. I'm Steve and this is Bland Man Studios, where I make creative stuff and talk about the technology behind it. This video is part one in our tutorial series on setting up your computer for playing video games in a Windows virtual machine running on Linux. This is all done using a technology called VFIO. In this video, we're going to go over installing Fedora Linux to either a computer that's freshly built or currently running Windows. Then, in the next couple videos, we'll go over setting up your host operating system for VFIO and creating your first gaming VM. If any of this is new to you, or if you haven't checked whether your hardware is compatible with VFIO, check out this tutorial's Part 0 video, which is linked in the description. Alternatively, if you're here to see how to install Fedora Linux in 2021, that's exactly what we're doing today. To give you a quick preview of where you'll be at the end of this video, you'll have Fedora Linux installed as a native operating system like you can see here. And with all that out of the way, let's get started. First, you'll want to find a PC running either Windows or Mac OS. In my case, I'm using the same Windows PC where I'm going to delete Windows and install Fedora. But for this part, you can use another computer. The important part is this USB and what we're going to put on it. Find an external USB drive with at least two gigabytes of space and nothing important on it. Plug it in and we're going to use a program called Fedora Media Creator to install a tiny version of Fedora Linux to that USB drive. The tiny version of Fedora is called a live OS. And after we create a USB drive with a live OS on it, we can use it to install Fedora Linux to almost any computer. So first go to the Fedora Projects download page, which is linked in the description. Download and install Fedora Media Creator. You can run the Media Creator like any other program, but I'm just going to let it start after the installer by checking this box. Select Workstation because that's the terminology used to describe an operating system for laptop and desktop computers. Then select the correct USB drive. I only have one plugged in, so the choice is easy but you want to be very careful here. If you select the wrong drive, you could accidentally overwrite the wrong thing and delete something important. It's already downloading the live OS version of Fedora, and we can check this box so that when the download completes, it will automatically start installing to the USB drive. You'll notice at some point, Windows doesn't see the USB drive anymore. That's because the installer has formatted our drive in such a way that Windows doesn't know how to read it anymore. But don't worry, we can always reset it later. When the media creator finishes, we now have a Linux Live USB stick. Plug this into the computer where you're going to be installing Linux, if it isn't there already. And the next step is to get our computer to boot to the Live OS. And I'm going to show you two ways to do this. The first is if you currently have Windows installed. Hold down the Shift key while you click Restart. When you do this, your computer will reboot to a special menu where you can choose to boot to the live USB drive. Don't worry if there are a couple entries for the USB drive, they should both work. The second method works if you don't have an operating system installed. First, check the link in the description to see which key is used on your computer to get to the boot menu. My Asus motherboard uses F8. So with the computer powered all the way down, turn it on and press F8. It will bring you to the computer's boot menu. There you can select to boot to the live USB drive. And if you've made it to this screen, nice job. You've successfully booted to the live OS. Now we just need to navigate through the menus to install our new operating system. Let the tests run and it will eventually bring you to this screen. Select Install to Hard Drive. And Continue. In this next menu, you have to set the installation destination. I only have one drive and I'm willing to delete everything on it so the process is simple. Make sure the drive is selected. Select Automatic Configuration. And when I click Done, it's going to warn me that I don't have enough free space on this drive to install Fedora. It will do this if you already have an OS installed. This is where I'm going to give it permission to delete my Windows install. 
I select Delete All and Reclaim Space. This hasn't actually deleted anything yet, but it will when we click Begin Installation, as you can see in this little note at the bottom. Click Begin Installation, and this next part will take a while. When it completes, you can power it down, remove the USB stick, and next time your computer turns on, it will boot to Fedora. The first boot will ask you some configuration questions, where you can set up a username and password to log in. And now you have a working Linux install and you're using an open source operating system. If you're following along with these tutorials, nice job! You've made it through the scariest part. This next video is going to be a little challenging, but well worth it. We're going to change some BIOS settings and configure Fedora so that it's ready to create your first virtual machine with gaming level performance. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. Thank you for watching and don't forget to stay bland.